Tawheed al rububiyyah in English it's uh, determined as the Tawheed of Lordship. The Tawheed of Lordship. And the Tawheed of Lordship, Tawheed al rububiyyah is our making Tawheed we know it means uniqueness, to make something unique. So we're making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unique somehow in rububiyyah. But what is rububiyyah? Rububiyyah are the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Tawheed al rububiyyah in its simple expression is to make the actions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unique to Allah. That we affirm there are certain actions that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does those actions. So it's our Tawheed with regards to the actions of Allah. That's what Rububiyyah is. The Tawheed of the actions of Allah. What are the actions of Allah? Creation. Creation. That's one. So we affirm that everything that we see in this world now, whatever exists, then all of that creation, the heavens and the earth, the rivers, the mountains, the lakes, creation is an action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unique to Allah. We affirm Allah created all of this and no one else has the ability to create any of this. Tawheed in the action of creation to Allah. Other actions? Ruling, <laughs> Ruling and controlling the world. Controlling the world. Controlling the affairs of the world. That, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is the owner of this world. The possessor of this world. He's the one who controls all of the affairs of this world. The rain when it comes down. Everything that happens in this world, it is under the control of Allah. So that is another action that we make the Tawheed of Allah in. That we say all of the affairs of this world are unique to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the one who controls them and does as he pleases with them. So that's Rububiyyah again. Our Tawheed in the actions of Allah. Another one is giving life and death. That's another action of Allah. It's not our action. We don't give life and death. That's another action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives life and he gives death. So we make our Tawheed again by saying that these actions are specific to Allah. And no one else has the ability to do that. So giving life is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving death is specific to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of these now, the basic principle is that Tawheed al rububiyyah the Tawheed of Lordship, is that we make Allah unique with His actions. Giving life, giving death, the rain, controlling the earth. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. All praise be due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds. He is the one who possesses all of the worlds. He is the one who controls all of the worlds. He is the one who does as He pleases in these worlds. Life, death, rain, all of these actions are unique to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not possible that anyone else besides Allah gives life and death. It's not possible that anyone besides Allah created this universe. So that's Tawheed al rububiyyah Singling out Allah and making Him unique with His actions. That's rububiyyah That category of Tawheed, uh, the Mushrikeen, did they accept this category of Tawheed or not? The Mushrikeen, they accepted it. We know that the Mushrikeen, at the time of the Prophet وسلم, they accepted this category of Tawheed. They accepted Rububiyyah. They accepted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who gives life and death and the rain and the creation. They accepted all of that. They never said that this idol, He is the one who gives life and death and this idol, He is the one who does this and does that. They accepted these actions are unique for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they accepted Tawheed al-Rububiyyah. But then, if that's the case, in the Qur'an, are there not various ayat, lots of ayat in the Qur'an which talk about Tawheed al-Rububiyyah? If it's the case that the Mushrikeen accepted Tawheed al-Rububiyyah, and in fact as the scholars say, everyone, every nation accepted the Rububiyyah. Everyone accepts that there is a creator who created them, and it's not their idols or their gods that they worship who created them. Every nation accepted that. And the Mushrikeen at the time of the Prophet, they also accepted that. So if that's the case, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about Rububiyyah in the Qur'an? If that was something agreed upon and accepted, why mention it in the Qur'an? Why not mention the other aspects which are disagreed about? Why speak about Rububiyyah in the Qur'an if it was accepted by the Mushrikeen anyway? Why? Right, that's it. So it's, it's because of the relationship between Rububiyyah and Uluhiyyah. Rububiyyah... If somebody accepts that, if someone accepts that Allah is the one who created him, Allah is the one who owns all of this world and, he, and the creation, Allah is the one who made the rivers, the earth, the creation, the life, the death, the rain, somebody accepts that Allah is the one who did all of that. Someone who accepts that, is it in any way logical for him to then say, I accept that Allah did all of those things, but I'm going to worship this idol that did none of those things. So that's the connection. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions Rububiyyah in the Quran. 
Because by affirming rububiyah, it's like saying, you accept X, Y, and Z. And you say, yeah, I accept X, I accept Y, I accept Z, I accept all of these things. Then I'll say to you, if you accept all of those things, then you've got to therefore worship Him. If you accept Allah created you and He created the heavens and the earth and life and death and the rain and all of these affairs, then you've got no choice but to worship Allah alone. How after accepting all of those things are you going to say, but despite that, I'm going to worship this piece of stone that didn't do any of those things. So the link is that if you prove rububiya to someone and everybody accepts that, then by follow on, by a prerequisite almost, they have to accept the next category, uluhiyya. Because it makes no sense for someone to say that I accept Allah does all of those things and is unique in all of those things. But despite that, I'm going to worship this or I'm going to worship that. So that's the reason why Allah mentioned rububiyya in the Quran as an evidence against the mushrikeen. Because the mushrikeen accepted all of that rububiyya. And that's why uh, there's ayat in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you were to say to the mushrikeen, uh, that if you were to say to them, to the mushrikeen, who created you, they will say Allah. And if you were to say to them in another ayah, who created the heavens and the earth, they will say, oh, uh, who does the heavens and the earth belong to? Then they, and the great throne, the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who does it belong to? They will say, surely all of this belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if they accepted all of that, this was an evidence against them, that you're accepting all of these things, but despite that, you're still going to worship something else that didn't do any of these things. So that's the reason why Rububiyah is mentioned in the Quran. So that's the first category. The second category is Tawheed al-Ulu.